What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Educated Barfly. Today, we're going to bring you up now. <laughs> For today's episode, we're going to do a little dive into a bottle uh, most people interested in cocktails should have, but many don't know about, and that is Suze Liqueur. Suze is a gentian-based aperitif liqueur from France, created in 1889 by a guy named Ferdinand Moreau, who wanted to make a new bitter aperitif that had a base of something other than wine. Most prominently, it has some very flowery and vegetal notes. It's also a little like lemony, grapefruit peel is in there, and it, the citrus is very perfumey in style. So for those of you that don't know, gentian is a blue flowering herb commonly found in the alpine regions of Europe. Its roots and barks are mainly used to make medicines to treat everything from digestion problems to cancer, and it is also found as a bittering element in most Amari on the market. Most famously, it's a major contributor to the flavor profile of both Campari and Aperol. And like Campari, it is found by many to be aggressively bitter before you acquire a taste for it. Think about it, gentian makes Campari bitter, and now this is a liqueur whose main ingredient is gentian. But it can be fantastic in cocktails, and it does really well in citrus-forward and sparkling drinks. It's a great way to replace the use of bitters or even Campari itself in cocktails and give new dimension and an alternative flavor profile to classic drinks that you want to revitalize. So today we're going to show you three cocktails that are not only amazing, but will also convince you that you're going to need a bottle of this behind your bar no matter how polarizing it actually is. Before we get into the cocktails, I just want to remind you guys to hit like and hit subscribe if you like our content. It's just a free way that you can help us continue to make this content for you. The Kingston Sound System is a Jungle Bird riff from New York City bartender turned spirit educator Shannon Mustafer. She created it for her bar Gladys in New York City, and it is also published in her book Tiki Modern Tropical Cocktails, which if you have not gotten, you should. I just want to also mention that in this cocktail, uh, it you originally used soursop, which is a fruit found in many Caribbean countries. But if you can't find it, you can just sub it out for pineapple. That is exactly what I did today because I could not find soursop either. It seems like something that I would probably have to special order. All right, first things first, we're going to a lime. Give it the old squeezy poo. That lime is like half lemon. I know. The limes have been really pale at the store lately. Is that just because they were sitting on the vine for too long? Not the vine, because it doesn't grow on a vine. The tree. I don't know. That's what happens when you overload fruit into your fruit bowl, I guess. So, do limes start off yellow and turn green when they ripen, or do they no, turn they start, yellow? No, they, turn, they start off green, 100%. And then they. I think his mom's got a lime tree, and I've watched them come in every yeah. single year. They so, they start green, and then they get big and big and big, and they're green, and then they become yellow as they sit on the as uh, they sit on the vine for a long time. So, uh, when they become overly ripe, they turn yellow. Or or, or is it when they actually? Well, ripen? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Are there those that say that? Uh, are there those that say that uh, we prematurely harvest the lime to make it sharper and less sweet? And if you let it sit on the Vine, uh, if you let it sit, I keep on saying sit on the vine. It does not on a vine. <laughs> if you let it sit on the tree for a really long time, um, like, is that how it's supposed to be? It's supposed to be yellow and sweet as I mean, opposed to like green and sharp? I, I guess. It's possible. It's very possible. I've never heard that around as like an actual thing, but I think that limes are just a genetic like mistake. They're like, I think they're engineered by humans out of different varieties of lemons, dude. Yeah, people call them lemons other places. Right. All right. So I think, but I, I, I'm pretty sure, I haven't like Googled this in a long mm -hmm. time, but I'm pretty sure if memory serves that limes are actually just lemon varietals that were crossbred together to create a lime. Like, right. Could be. But if they ripen yellow on the tree, or as vine as you call it, uh, <laughs> then uh, maybe they're supposed to be yellow. Yeah. Interesting. And I do enjoy me some key lime pie which is completely off the subject. First things first, three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, three quarters of an ounce of pineapple juice or soursop if you have it, half an ounce of Suze, one and a half ounces of overproof Jamaican rum. We're using rum fire. You can absolutely sub for Ray and Nephew if you want, or any other overproof Jamaican rum, really. Add some ice to our tin. Give it a shake. Add our ice into our glass, like so. Give it a strain. And then we're gonna pineapple frond it. And, <laughs> kind of thick, but, you know what? You know what? Dehydrated. Oh, I can't dehydrate, you know why? 
I can't use uh, our wonderful Barfly brand dehydrated uh, or, uh, limes because everybody bought them all. Oh. And I don't have any more. I'm going to make more. But I will uh, tempt fate here and use a, a mandolin here and make a really nice thin lime wheel. All right, let's taste this. That is good. It definitely tends to the tart side. And I gotta say that this is a very bold recipe for not using any simple syrup whatsoever. I could see a teaspoon of simple syrup going in here, sort of balance things out. But what Shannon did pretty brilliantly here was that she balanced out the lime juice with the sugar from the Sous and the sugar from the, well, it should be soursop, but from the pineapple to balance out the lime juice. And she does a pretty good job. It does tend a little bit to the tart side, but what's really nice is that you have really high proof Jamaican rum in there and you don't really feel the heat of it. It is nice and bright. It's tropical, but not overly so. You get the hogo from the Jamaican rum on top of the pineapple. And then you got the balance of the citrus right on the back end, along with um, and all those other flavors. I don't know, all those flavors. It's a pretty simple drink. It's really good. I think some of you guys that want a, a sweeter cocktail might want to put maybe a teaspoon of simple syrup in there. I could see it going in there to balance the citrus a little bit more, but I really like it. And I, but I also like drinks that kind of tend to the, I guess, tart side of balance. So there it is, the Kingston Sound System. The Fumata Bianca was created by a New York City bartender named Timothy Miner in 2016, and that's all of the information I have on it. So that's all the information you're gonna get. But guess what? This is gonna be a very easy, very fast cocktail to put together. No shaking required. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do one ounce of Bianco Vermouth, one ounce of Suze, half an ounce of Mezcal. And I'm also gonna show you guys a little trick with soda. A lot of people that you notice will put ice in here and then put soda on here. But the thing is, is that the cocktail is gonna be a lot more dense than the soda water. It's got more sugar in it. And so the soda would really just sit on top. I mean, you could do the little spoon trick where you put the spoon in there with your ice in there and you go down the spoon. But really all you have to do is just add a little of the effervescence straight into the cocktail before you put any ice to make sure that it all mixes and you get the effervescence throughout the entire cocktail. And then of course, we're just gonna offset our volume here by adding in our ice, add in as much ice as the glass will hold. You wanna make sure to get enough ice that it just goes throughout the entire cocktail. We can just add a little bit more soda in there. Voila. And as a garnish, we're just gonna do a nice grapefruit peel. If I can, ooh, I can. That grapefruit did peel did not wanna come off. Just gonna spritz it with some grapefruit there. And I think that we should uh, clean up the peel. Let me just stick it into the glass like so. Well, let's give it a sip. Well, the mezcal plays so well with the gentian. Oh yeah. I like that because the mezcal isn't super bracing. You get the minerality of it. You get a little bit of the smoke. I mean, we're using Vita, so it's not very smoky. It's like citrusy with a little bit of smoke. And so you get that right on the back end of it. And then the gentian is really in the body of the cocktail, and then you have some of the botanicals from the vermouth. Although the vermouth is also playing nicely. I mean, it's all just very nice. That's kind of what you want in a cocktail. You want it to have many layers. You want to be able to taste these things separately and together, kind of all at the same time. And uh, you also want something that is refreshing, something that will hit the spot, and something that you can see yourself drinking at the bar. And this hits all of those criteria. There it is, the Fumata Bianca. Soak it up. Buttercup. The Pennington Daiquiri was created by Death & Company alum Tyson Bueller for the now shuttered New York City bar Lost Hours, and it's just a really nice play on a staple classic cocktail. First things first, cut a lemon and juice it. In our tin, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of simple syrup, half an ounce of honey syrup. He went the exact opposite way than Shannon Mustaver. <laughs> She put like no sugar into her cocktail and he put a bunch of sugar into his cocktail. This one seems like my kind of, kind of cocktail. You think so? Yeah, you like a sweet, sweeter. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I, I'm really, like, I haven't taste, tasted this cocktail yet, so I'm really interested to see what the balance is gonna be. Half an ounce of Suze, just a little more sugar, but not a lot, but a little more. Three quarters of an ounce of our Berteau brandy. 
This is uh, American brandy out of New York City. Well, the guy who created, the guy who started the brand lives in New York City. I don't think that the brandy itself is from New York City. Uh, uh, I don't know then, if I would want that. And then one ounce of, you don't see the label just completely peeled off. Not sketchy at all. It is, uh, it is not moonshine. It is Rum J.M. Blanc. It is Rum Agricole from Rum J.M. It's the Blanc. We're doing an ounce into our tin. Uh, I think we should get the uh, a nice larger volume coop for this. So we're gonna use this guy right here. It bango, is. Bango, bango, right there. It is also very fitting. Uh, it is fitting, because why? Why is it fitting? Because he's a Death & Co alumni and this is the Death & Co glass. That's true. Interesting. I was looking up the um, recipe mm -hmm. and- um, It's completely different. No, no, no. I was looking up the recipe and it's, it's, it's garnished with a lime wedge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But it's a lemon juice cocktail, which is interesting. You don't usually see that, but I guess it's kind of, you could squeeze the lime in there to like, a cut. there's enough sugar in this that you could squeeze the lime wedge in there to add a little more acid if you need it. And then on top of that, you get the lemon lime juxtaposed one off the other. So that would be kind of nice actually, but you do not see it very often, but I do love a lemon lime cocktail. All right, let's give it a shake. Give it a strain. Perfect wash line there. And we will garnish with a lime wedge. He said enthusiastically. And we'll garnish with a lime wedge. Yeah. Is that better? Bing. Here we go. Taste it. Cheers. Oh, yeah, it's got a lot more sugar than that first one, but uh, it's nice. It's actually not overly sweet. And what's cool about it is that you get the sh you get best of both worlds. You get the sharpness of the simple syrup. You get the kind of more subtle sweetness of the uh, honey. Because, you know, even though honey is technically sweeter than simple syrup, it is sweet in a different way. It's like a less offensive. I mean, I don't find simple syrup offensive, but like it's a less like sharp, you know, kind of saccharine sort of sweetness. You know, it's got more of a, the way that I have described it on this channel is savory sweet, but I feel like savory is not the right word for it. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. Sophisticated sweetness. Yeah, I mean, it is more sophisticated. It's, it's more uh, complex for sure. The sweetness is something that you get like right on the front of it. And then you do get that citrus, but the sharpness of the citrus has pretty much been taken away by the sweetness of the cocktail. The brandy and the lemon kind of form the body of the cocktail and then you get the grassy notes of the rum first and it has this nice evolution in your mouth. The most striking thing about this cocktail is the way that the Suze plays in the drink and that's the whole reason for this entire video is to talk about the Suze. The Suze brings in enough bitterness to tame the sweetness and it also tastes really well with brandy which to tell you the honest to God truth, I don't know if I would put Suze or like any type of like gentian flavor with brandy and say that's gonna be good. But it actually is, it's not bad. This is a really nicely worked cocktail. There it is guys, the Pennington Daiquiri, highly recommend it, especially for those of you that like a sweeter drink. I am gonna continue doing videos like this because I maintain that I want this channel to be the most informative channel that you can get on the internet when it comes to making cocktails and finding cool products to use and Suze definitely is one of those. It's also one of those products that aren't, that isn't just regionally available, it's available internationally and in most uh, regions. So you'll be able to get it by and large. And I think that for those of you that are interested in cocktails, you should go out and get a bottle. This video isn't sponsored by Suze or anything. I just really love getting behind those products that I love and I want you to love them too. Hit like, hit subscribe. Thank you very much for supporting our channel for all of you guys that have watched. We have a Patreon that we are getting back to very, very shortly. We're gonna make it its own uh, platform. We're gonna do stuff there that we don't do anywhere else. So if you like this channel and you wanna support what we do, you can check us out over there. And then of course, check out theeducatedbarfly.com for our wonderful garnishes. We have great t-shirts. I don't know if any of you guys know this and I don't know how many of you guys watch this far, but Marius has its own his own channel. It's called Marius Cinematic Universe where he reviews uh, a lot of products. Well, how would you describe it? It's like a fanboy channel where you review very well done props and costumes from pop culture. Yeah. Is that, I mean, is that a fair assessment of the channel? Uh, yeah, I guess. It, it's supposed to be like movie adjacent, like behind the scenes kind of props and replicas and sets and stuff, but it's mostly been toys 
for now? Mostly been toys. Yes, that's right. And then not only that, you also 3D print your own stuff. Like, yeah, like yes. full size helmets and things, right? Well, not a helmet, but I. I thought you were doing a Stormtrooper helmet. No, like I'm a printing. Big, a big one. I'm printing C3PO. Oh, you're printing a life size 3CPO. C3PO, yeah. So, wait, and, so uh, are you, have, do you have a, I know you're talking and I'm continually interrupting you and I apologize, but I'm very intrigued by this C3PO thing. Um, is it like, it's, so it's a life-sized robot. Mm -hmm. Did you have like. It's, so it's like, a, it's a costume, but I'm going to do it as a sculpture. So you could wear it. You could, yeah. I didn't print it so that I can wear it, I think. It's a like, little. Like taller tight. than you or something? No, it's actually a little tight. You'd probably have to scale it up a little bit. Oh, got you. Stuff. So. so do you have like a 3D printer going like 24 hours a day, printing this thing for like several years? Uh, it seems like a yeah, lot, like that would take a long time to 3D print. Uh, it, it, yeah. And you have to paint it too, right? It, well, Cause it's just gonna be gray or whatever the plastic yeah, is. Yeah, you have to sand it and prime it and sand it and bondo it and sand it. And, and, and then the whole like making it gold and like chrome and shiny gold kind of stuff. That's that's a whole like crazy. A whole another thing. Yeah. So you've just taken a deep dive into YouTube. Uh, yeah. On yeah. that. <laughs> it's uh. It started with the worst one, I think. So we'll see. Anyway, we'll see. Marius has this channel, and he didn't tell anyone. I didn't actually know until uh, a guy that we know named Carl told me about it. I don't know how he, um, how he found out either. I don't know how he found out either, but he was like, Marius has his own channel, and then I was like, what? And then I had to look it up. So it's called Marius Cinematic Universe, which I think is very witty. Uh, and I think you guys should give him a sub. He's been doing it for like two years now, although he's only really been posting for like a year and a couple months. If you guys are interested in pop culture stuff, you should give him a sub. I, I, you know, let's help him make his channel successful. I think it's pretty amazing that he does it. Uh, he's obviously very good at filming and editing stuff. So, you know, give him a, give him a follow and we will see you guys in another time.